Peace and love, black family. This is the Prince of Pan-Africanism, Dr. Umar Johnson, International Ifa Tunde. I'm live and direct, Memphis, Tennessee. First, I want to give a shout out to all the brothers and sisters who came out to the University of Memphis yesterday for the eighth annual Men of Color Conference. I really enjoyed it. Always good when I come to Tennessee. Chattanooga, I'm working on Chattanooga. Knoxville, I'm working on Knoxville. Nashville, I'm working on Nashville, all right? So Knoxville, Nashville, Chattanooga, the Prince of Pan-Africanism is working on getting on back there, all right? Shout out to Columbus, Georgia. Prince of Pan-Africanism will be speaking in Columbus, Georgia for the first time Tuesday. This coming Tuesday, November the 22nd, I uh, believe that's the 6 o'clock program at the Liberty Theater. I think that's 813 8th Avenue, so you can go ahead and get your tickets for that. Uh, the flyer should be on my Facebook feed. It should be on my Twitter. It should also be on my Instagram. All right, so Columbus, Georgia. It'll be my first time coming to Columbus, so I'm looking forward to that. Washington, D.C., December 4th. Shout out to Washington, D.C., all my brothers and sisters in the upper Maryland, D.C., Baltimore area. I'll be at the Thurgood Marshall Center on Sunday, December the 4th. Sunday, December the 4th for the DMV, all right? And then Kwanzaa, excuse me, not Kwanzaa. We got Elizabeth, New Jersey, Saturday, December the 10th. We got Elizabeth, New Jersey on Saturday, December the 10th, all right? So shout out to Elizabeth. We're going to be at the Mickey Walker Community Center there. And then on Sunday, Jamaica, Queens. Sunday, Jamaica, Queens. You can scroll up my Facebook, my Instagram, and my Twitter for the flyers. You can email me for the flyer, but I prefer you find it on my social network because if I have to email everybody, that's a lot of work. So if you can just find it, please, on my Twitter, my Instagram, and my social network, just scroll up. But if you can't find it, go ahead and shoot me a text, shoot me the email, and I will shoot you the flyer. And then we got first day of Kwanzaa. Looks like we're going to be in St. Louis, Missouri. St. Louis, rest in peace to Michael Brown, Monday, December the 26th. And then on Wednesday, December the 28th, we're looking at Jacksonville, Florida. That's confirmed. Wednesday, December the 28th, third day of Kwanzaa, Jacksonville, Florida for my first visit in like four or five years. And then we go to Detroit, Detroit, Michigan, Friday, December the 30th in Detroit, Michigan. And then, of course, we're going to end it off in Hotlanta. No better place to end it off than Hotlanta, Georgia. You know how me and Atlanta get down. Okay, and that's going to be New Year's Day, January the 1st in Atlanta, Georgia at the Shrine of the Black Madonna. So what I want to do today is I want to talk about mentally gifted. Uh, I have yet to do a video tutorial from what I can remember on mental giftedness in black children. So I kind of want to hit up on this mentally gifted uh, situation um, okay first of all the United States Constitution does not give anyone any child a right to an education okay so the United States Constitution doesn't give any child in America a right to an education so that's number one so if children do not have a right to an education they most certainly also do not have a right to gifted education, all right? So there's no constitutional right to learn, and there's definitely not any constitutional right for gifted children to provide, be provided with a better quality education. However, when the federal government created special ed in 1975, they equated deprivation of education with 14th Amendment violation. So basically, the feds basically stepped in and said, if the states are going to give children a right to learn, because education is a state right, it is a state right, a federal interest and a local function. Let me say that again. Public and charter education is a state right, federal interest, local function. The feds only get involved in education if they are willing to pay for their project. So special ed is a federal law. They pay money. No Child Left Behind, which is now Every Child Must Succeeds Act, 
So the No Child Left Behind, which was signed by George W. Bush, has now been overtaken by Obama's ESSA, Every Student Shall Succeed Act, which he signed last December of 2015. There's money with that. J-R-O-T-C. There's money with that. Title I. There's money with that. The reason why there's money is because it's not a constitutional right. You understand? So whenever the, whenever the federal government creates a program, they finance that program. Okay? So for Section 504, there is no money with 504. Okay? Because 504 it comes under constitutional rights. 504 is civil rights legislation. The 14th Amendment guarantees everyone equal protection under the law. So the reason the feds do not pay for 504 is because 504 is protected by the Constitution. They pay for JROTC because JROTC is not protected by the Constitution. They pay for Title I because Title I is not protected by the Constitution. Do you understand? So education is a state right federal interest local function by local function we mean that it's carried out on the local level okay now giftedness is not a constitutional right but when the federal government created special law somewhere within the history of special ed they created a protection for gifted students so for example when i first became a school psychologist at the turn of the 21st century the year 2000 Mental giftedness was a special ed category. There were 14 disabilities, not 13, which is what we have now. So now we have deafness, blindness, traumatic brain injury, orthopedic impairment, multiple disability, other health impairment, speech and language impairment, learning disability, emotional disturbance, autism, mental retardation, which Obama changed to intellectual disability. Okay, but we also had MG. Mental giftedness was once a special ed category however back in 2000 early 2000s maybe 2005 somewhere in there they took giftedness out of the special ed law when they took giftedness out of the special ed law it no longer had federal protection it was regulated back to the states to determine whether or not they wanted to have a gifted program so what i'm saying what i'm saying is first thing you need to find out if you think you have a gifted child, the first thing you need to find out if you think you have a gifted child, you need to find out whether or not the state or territory that you live in, whether it still has a gifted law. Does the state you live in still have a gifted policy? Does the state you live in still have a gifted regulation? So, for example, I live in Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania still has a gifted law. Okay. It is chapter 16. Chapter 16 of the Pennsylvania Code is the code for gifted students. Unlike a state like Michigan, from what I understand, Michigan, and I'll be in Detroit December 30th, Michigan does not have a gifted law, from what I understand. Okay, That means that if you think your child is mentally gifted in Michigan, the school district is not required to evaluate for giftedness and if the child is gifted, you cannot force the school district to provide your child with gifted support. But in Pennsylvania, you can request that your child be evaluated for gifted. And in Pennsylvania, you can force or request the school districts and, and charter schools to provide your child with a gifted education. So again, since giftedness is no longer protected under federal special ed law, you have to find out if your state has giftedness. I don't know if every state has giftedness or not, okay, because that's 50 states. I can't remember all that. It's your job. My job is to empower you, okay? You have to do the research, okay? Contact. It's one phone call. It's one phone call. Contact your state department of education and find out if there still is a gifted law in your state. I would not trust I would not trust my child's local school district to tell me whether or not there is a gifted law in the state because school districts lie. School districts do not want to provide gifted education. And the reason school districts do not want to provide gifted education is because they don't get paid for it. OK, 
you got paid for it. When giftedness was a part of the special ed code, schools were paid for MG students. I remember this. At the end of the year, the principals at the schools I serviced in Philadelphia, they would give me a list of like 30 kids and they wanted me to test all these kids at the end of the year so they could get the money. They did not care about the child being gifted. In most cases, they did nothing to support the gifted child, but they wanted them to get evaluated so that they could get the money. It was about money. Special ed is still about money. But since giftedness is no longer protected in federal special ed law, since schools don't get money, they're not looking for the gifted kids. A lot of states simply said, if the feds are not going to give me money for this, then guess what? I'm not looking for gifted kids, even in states that still have a gifted law like Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania still has a gifted law, but guess what? Okay, the schools in Pennsylvania are not looking for gifted kids. They don't even tell parents. They keep it hush hush. They don't even tell black parents that there's a gifted law because they don't want to provide for students that they're not getting paid for. Public education is about money. I keep telling you guys this. Public education is about money. Education is one of the biggest dis one of the biggest industries in America and across the world. Think about it. Everyone has children. Most people have children. Those children have to be educated. So education is a very, 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 very big industry. A lot of people are involved in education, not because they love our children, but they simply want to make money off of our children. Okay? So first thing you need to do is find out if your state has a gifted law. If your state does have a gifted law, I can pretty much assure you that you should read that entire law, print it out. It's not long. Okay, the gifted laws are very simple laws. It might be five to 10 pages, no more than 20. Okay, Pennsylvania's chapter 16 gifted code is maybe five to 10 pages. Okay, so every parent who believes that they have a gifted child should read the gifted law for your state. Print it out, read it, take out your ink pen, Take out your highlighter and read the entire code. It's only 5 to 10, 15, 20 pages. You should read it, okay? Okay? Knowledge is power. You need to know the law before you even ask for an evaluation. You need to know the law before you even ask for an evaluation. Dr. Umar Johnson can assist you with the uh, special ed evaluation law because that's federal. Gifted is no longer federal. I can assist you with the special ed evaluation process because it's federal. It applies to every state. The gifted law is no longer federal, so it's no longer national. You have to find out what your state provides as it relates to giftedness. Okay? Very important. All right? Uh, now, okay, let's say that your, your child is in a state that has a gifted law. How do you initiate a gifted evaluation? You write a letter to the principal of your child's school. You write a letter to the principal of your child's school. Okay, I'm writing a letter to request that my son, Jermaine Shoemake, be evaluated. I believe that he is mentally gifted. I do not believe that the instruction that he's receiving in the classroom is sufficient to meet my son's needs. His teacher is complaining that he is finishing his work too quickly. He is complaining that the work is too easy. I'm looking at the homework. It is way too easy. My son already knows this information. I'm requesting a mentally gifted evaluation to determine if my son is in fact gifted. Now, in states that have a gifted law, after you get that gifted evaluation, in states that have a gifted law, after you get that gifted evaluation, if your child was denied qualification as a gifted student, okay, you should probably let Dr. Umar Johnson take a look at that evaluation. You should probably let Dr. Umar Johnson take a look at that evaluation because black kids are routinely discriminated against when it comes to gifted qualification. Let me say this again. Black children are routinely discriminated against when it comes to gifted qualification. Let's keep in mind, this is the United States of America. The gifted movement was started in 1954, the same year as the Brown versus Board of Education Supreme Court decision. The reason mental gift, the mentally gifted movement was initiated in the United States in 1954 is because it was used as a strategy to separate black kids from white kids after the Supreme Court decision.
In other words, when the Supreme Court said that public schools can no longer use race as a factor in education, white folks started the gifted movement so they could separate their white kids again. They couldn't do it based on color. They couldn't do it based on color, so they did it based on ability. They simply said that our white kids are too intelligent to be in the same class with these black kids. It has nothing to do with color. We're not doing this because of color. We're doing this because the white kids are intellectually superior to the black children. So the history of mental giftedness is the history of racism and discrimination against black children. The history of mental giftedness in America is the history and discrimination against black children. You need to understand this. You further need to understand that 99% of all school psychologists in America are something other than African. 99% of all school psychologists in America are something other than African. So if 99% of the school psychologists in America are something other than African, that, that means... Okay, if 99%, if 99% of the people doing the evaluations for your child in America are something other than black, that means what? That means that the chances of your child being qualified as mentally gifted, okay, are slim and far few in between. Do you understand? It's going to be very, very difficult to get a black child qualified as mentally gifted by white folks, by Asians, by Chinese. And most uh, psychologists, you understand, they're white. And they are not going to feel too comfortable about classifying a black child as mentally gifted. This is something that we need to understand as parents, okay? Okay, so it's going to be difficult to get your child classified and qualified as MG, which is why I often encourage parents, if you can afford it, if you can afford it, you should pay for your child to be independently evaluated for gifted first. Now, it is true. School districts have a right to the first evaluation. School districts have a right to the first evaluation, but sometimes you can force them to go ahead and accept the outside evaluation for your child. Okay? Sometimes you can outside. for your child okay so we don't take the word of anyone who tells us our kids are not gifted okay unless we follow up on that and if your state has a gifted law you can request an independent educational evaluation if your gate has a if your state has a gifted law you can request an independent educational evaluation if you disagree with the law but I want you I want you okay to let me see that evaluation I want you to let me see that evaluation. Umar Johnson wants to see the evaluations for any black kid who was diagnosed as retarded or failed to be diagnosed as gifted. If you believe your child is gifted and they were evaluated and they did not qualify, I would like to see that evaluation. Dr. Umar would like to see that evaluation. I want to see it myself. Okay, because they routinely discriminate against kids who are gifted. However, parents, I need to clarify. Being a gifted child is not the same as being a high achieving child. Being a mentally gifted child is not the same as being a high achieving child. A lot of black children are simply high achieving children. I was a high achieving child. I was referred for the gifted program. I did not make it. My good buddy Mark at Mead Elementary School in North Philly, he qualified as gifted. Mark was gifted. I was only high achieving. You understand? I missed the gifted mark. Now, is it possible that I was discriminated against? Okay, is it possible that the psychologist uh, did not interpret my IQ scores correctly? It's possible. In fact, I wish I could get a hold of my mentally gifted evaluation from Mead Elementary School. I would like to look at it now, being an expert school psychologist, to determine whether or not that failure to classify me as MG was actually uh, accurate or not. Okay? So, now, high achieving is not gifted. We also have this thing in the African American community where people feel or believe that all kids are gifted. I understand the rationale for saying every black child has certain talents. I agree with that. We have kids who are talented in music. 
They may be talented in art. They may be talented in oratory. Okay, many people would consider me to be a gifted orator. Do you understand? Natural talents and abilities. Okay, I understand that. But let me be clear. As someone who has been evaluating children for almost 20 years, a gifted child is a gifted child. Okay, we have children whose intelligence supremely surpasses the intelligence of other kids their age, other kids their grade, other kids their race, other kids their social economic status. There is a such thing as being gifted. I want to be clear. I want to be absolutely clear. We have children who are more intelligent than adults. I've evaluated children who are smarter than the teachers in their school, every teacher in the school. So I want to make sure we understand this because, you know, we got the whole Hotep movement, you know, where they say every black kid is gifted. Well, I understand that. I agree with that. Every black children has certain talents that God gave them that are above average. I agree with that. But that has nothing to do with the fact that we have some African babies who were blessed by God, who were given an ori, you understand, who were endowed by their ancestors with a quality of intelligence that would straight up uh, uh, overwhelm any IQ test. So, yes, I am a proponent of gifted education for children who are truly gifted, for children who who are truly gifted. We have black children who are truly gifted. In fact, at the Frederick Douglass Marcus Garvey Academy for children who are truly gifted, there will be a special program for them. Just like I'm gonna have a special program for the autistic kids, a special program for the deaf kids, the blind kids, the emotionally challenged kids, I'm gonna have a special program for the MG. You have to do something because they finish their work quicker. They master the material more effectively than everyone else does. So yes, there is a such thing as MG, but no, I don't necessarily agree with how white folk determine MG. Now, let me also say this. If you're a black parent who has a child who you believe is gifted, I think that you should provide your own child with their gifted support. See, I don't believe we need to ask white folks to do everything for us. We have this problem where we want white folks to do everything. We want white folks to teach black history. We want white folks to teach kids about this and teach kids of no. Okay, I'm an educator, principal. It's not the teacher's job to raise the kids. It is not the teacher's job to raise the children. I want to say that on behalf of teachers. It is not the teacher's job to raise your children. Some things you should do. If you know your child is mentally gifted, you can work with your mentally gifted child on your own. You can work with your mentally gifted child on your own. When they come home, after school, on the weekends, holidays, vacation, why can't you take your mentally gifted child to the library and give them certain assignments? Why can't you enroll your mentally gifted child in certain programs? We have to stop. We know the schools don't work. So if you know the schools don't work, why are you trying to get your child as? If they can barely teach your child how to read, if they can barely teach your child how to count, if they can barely teach your child how to write, how great do you think the quality of the gifted program is going to be? How great do you think the quality of the gifted program is going to be if you're asking a school that can't even fulfill their basic primary obligation of education? You're asking a school that can't even fulfill their basic primary obligation of education, and now you want to give them more responsibility. Does that make sense to you? Because that doesn't make sense to me. They can barely teach your child as it is, and now you want to ask them to provide the gifted education. Now, let me also say this. I've had a lot of parents refuse the gifted evaluation. I've had a lot of black parents refuse the gifted evaluation because they don't agree with the gifted programming. I support you. I haven't found a school yet. I haven't found a school yet, public, private, parochial, independent, or charter, that provides gifted kids, black or white, black or white. I haven't found a school yet that provides gifted kids with a quality education. I haven't found one yet. So I support parents who say, I don't want my child in the gifted program because they don't do nothing but sit around and play all day. I agree with you. 
Okay. Now for parents who can afford it, you can pay for your child to go to a gifted school. If you can afford it, there's a lot of gifted schools out there. You can pay for your child to go to a gifted school. But for parents who can't afford that, you may have to provide the gifted education yourself. But let me be clear. Let me be clear. Even though you don't agree with the gifted program, you should still get your child evaluated and classified as mentally gifted. You should still get your child evaluated and classified as mentally gifted. I want to make sure we clear on this, okay? I want to make sure we clear. I still want you to get your child evaluated and classified for MG. You know why? Because a black boy or girl classified as MG, that label will help. That label will help them get into certain schools. That label will help them get into certain colleges. There's certain scholarships. There's certain scholarships that only mentally gifted kids can qualify for. So even if you do not want the gifted support program from the public or charter school, you should still get them evaluated. You should still get them evaluated because you want the label. You want to use that label to exploit any services or financial support that is available. They apply to college. My child was a mentally gifted kid. They apply to summer camp. My child is a mentally gifted kid. They apply for a job, even on a job application. This kid is mentally gifted. They apply for certain high schools. This child is mentally gifted. So definitely, so definitely get them evaluated. And don't let charter schools tell you they don't evaluate for gift, evaluate for gifted. If your state still has a gifted law, as is the case in Pennsylvania, if your state still has a gifted law, as is the case in Pennsylvania, okay, then guess what? They have to evaluate. Charter schools have to evaluate. The, a charter school is a public school. A charter school is a public school. Stop letting them brainwash you into thinking that they don't have to follow the same law. They have to follow the same state laws as the public schools. And if your state still has a gifted law, the charter schools must evaluate your child for mental giftedness. Okay? I want to be very clear about that. Okay? No, I'm not going to address that. I'm not going to address the latest attack by uh, that idiot in New York, Sarnetta. And um, uh, doo doo diamonds, doo doo diamonds, the idiot who calls himself a uh, doggy diamonds. I'm not even going to speak on that. You know, every year Sarnetta does this attack thing on Dr. Umar, so I'm not going to pay him, you know, no mind. We're just going to let that fly on out. The same coon sent me a text last month saying he wanted to squash the beef, and now he got another hate video on me. Uh, you know, so I'm not even going to pay that no mind. And as far as that doggy doo doo do little doggy poodle doggy idiot whatever he is, um, you know when I was at the Million Man March he couldn't run up couldn't wait to run up to me and take a picture and do a little video but now he on the thing hating you know that's why I don't mess with the whole tap community because half of them is full of nonsense you understand so we're not even gonna feed that okay we're not even gonna feed that they just want a response because they want to benefit from the love and support that I get from y'all so we're gonna let Sarnetta B. Sarnetta, okay, so interesting because he had one of his young bulls text me last week and uh, tell me that Sarnetta wanted to offer me $10,000 to do a lecture, okay, first of all, I will never work with him again in life, in fact, I call him Sarnetta, N-E-V-A, Sarnetta, because I will never work with his ass again, okay, I'm tired of the hate, I'm tired of the videos, I don't bother you. You got about 20 people in your House of Coons movement. Just go and work with the House of Coons. Leave me alone. I don't bother you. I don't bother your squad. But you can't keep my name out your mouth. So you and Doggy Poodle, Doodoo, Doodoo Diamonds, Doggy Doodoo, whatever the hell his name is, y'all can just keep on doing your Amos and Andy routine. Okay, you two clowns. And just leave me the hell alone. So let's get back to the mentally gifted thing. Okay. What is the criteria for uh, mental giftedness? OK, the criteria, number one, is in order to be qualified as mentally gifted, you generally have to have an IQ of 130 or greater. A 130 IQ is very superior intelligence. A 130 IQ is very superior intelligence. So your child will be given an IQ test except in states like California where they don't use an IQ test, they use other measures, and there's some issues with that too, okay? But the child needs to have a 130 IQ. But I need you guys to understand that even if your child does not 
earn a 130 IQ score, they cannot exclude him or her from giftedness on the basis of IQ alone. They cannot exclude him or her on the basis of uh, of an IQ score alone. Okay, so y'all need to know that. So first you need an IQ of 130. Okay, and there's different IQ scores. I use the Wechsler Intelligence Scale. There's different ones, and you have to watch that too. Always ask which IQ test you're going to be using for my child's gifted eval. Let me say that again. Always ask the evaluating school psychologist, what intelligence measure will you be using for my child's gifted assessment? What intelligence measure will you be using for my child's gifted assessment, and why did you choose that one? Did y'all hear me? Me personally, I believe the Wechsler Intelligence Scale for Children, 5th edition, is the most effective. Okay, I believe that that is the most, uh, 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 the most efficient IQ test for black kids. All the IQ tests are racist. All the IQ tests are culturally biased. But if I have to evaluate a black child for gifted, I believe that the Wechsler Scale, did y'all hear me? Dr. Umar's opinion is that the Wechsler Scale... So you want to ask the school psychologist, what IQ test are you using? Because the Stanford Binet is kind of tedious. If they're using a Stanford Binet intelligence test for your child, I don't really like the Stanford Binet. I don't. I think it's a bit too tedious for the kids. Woodcock Johnson, test of cognitive abilities, I don't really like that one for the children either. If I were you, I would request that the Wechsler scale be used on my child. And if they say why, I would say I believe that the Wechsler scale okay, is the most straightforward less ambiguous measure of intelligence for my child. I want you to use the Wechsler. But even if you don't ask them which one you want them to use, okay, find out what they are using. You need to know this. You need to be very informed about this, okay? And then once the child is evaluated, you also, there's a, how many gifted measures? There's dozens of them. There's dozens of tests. Testing is a big business, so there's dozens. But you want to look for the measures that are most reputable. And for me, the Wechsler scale is the best scales to use for the, for our children. Okay, that, that that's where I'm coming from. All right, now, once your child gets evaluated, you then want to look at the individual scores. Okay, remember, you got the full scale IQ score, but then you also have about four or five index scores. You want to look at those index scores to see whether or not there was a lot of scatter. Let me give you an example. Your child got a 120 IQ. And for me, I would still qualify a black kid for gifted with a 120 and I would chalk up those 10 points that they fell short. Instead of getting a 130, they got a 120. I would still qualify them as gifted with the 120. Why? Because those extra 10 points can be explained by the cultural biasness in the test. In other words, this child got a 120, but they still qualify for gifted because these tests are culturally biased. The vocabulary and concepts used are not vocabulary and concepts that black children are generally exposed to. And because of that, this child will be qualified with a 120. Superior intelligence is 120. Very superior is 130. You can make the case that a black child who scores a 120 should still qualify. I always tell you guys I had a case in Lower Marion High School, Kobe Bryant's high school. African-American boy was excluded from being mentally gifted on the re-eval with a 125. And they excluded him. I said, you can't exclude him on a 125. He meets all other criteria. Remember what I said earlier. You cannot exclude a child from giftedness on the basis of IQ score alone. Okay? You cannot exclude a child from giftedness on the basis of IQ score alone. Okay? So anyhow, IQ score number one. Number two, Evidence of gifted ability on permanent products. That means you should have work samples of your child. You should have tests, quizzes, reports, projects, assignments that your child has completed that clearly shows that they are gifted based on how well they complete. This is why parents need to keep your child's work. Don't throw out the homework. Don't throw out the tests. Don't throw out the quizzes. You need to keep all of this information because you can use it. You can use all of this information to prove that your child is gifted. You can also use this information to prove that your child is not getting a quality education if they are in special ed. Keep everything. Until they graduate from high school, keep everything. Okay? Keep everything. All right? So number two, permanent products. Number three, evidence that the child loves education. This is important. 
because we have a lot of gifted black kids, but they don't demonstrate that they are gifted. In order for your child to qualify as gifted, they have to demonstrate that they are gifted. So if you got a kid who's smart, who don't want to do his homework, don't want to come to school, don't complete his assignments, I'm not qualifying him. I'm not qualifying him. OK, however, if they do have a serious psychological or emotional issue, you cannot discriminate against them on the basis of that disability. Did you hear what I said? If the child has a serious psychological or emotional challenge, you cannot discriminate. So if your child has a, a ADHD, a conduct disorder, and they try to keep him out of giftedness because he has conduct disorder, that's discrimination. That's a violation of 14th Amendment rights, equal protection under the law. You cannot keep a child from gifted because they're emotionally disturbed. You cannot keep a child from gifted because they're ADHD. You cannot discriminate against a child and keep them out of gifted because they have conduct disorder. Do you understand? Okay. Next thing, test scores. In order for your child to qualify as gifted, they want to see evidence of superior academic achievement. Even if your kid got a 130 IQ, but they below basic on the state assessments, or they only got C's, you understand, on their tests, they're not going to qualify. You have to have above average academic achievement as evidenced by test scores. So your child has to be above average proficient mastery, okay? Above average mastery proficient. If they're not it can be difficult to qualify them. Some districts will still qualify them, but it can be very difficult to qualify a child with gifted if the test scores don't support that, even if the IQ tests do. And remember, when you get the IQ test, as I was saying a minute ago, I lost my train of thought, you wanna look at the differences in the scores. Because if your child got a 120, and you look and see that he got a 130 in this area, a 130 in the second area, a 130 in this area. He got a 130 for nonverbal reasoning. He got a, a 130 for processing speed. He got a 130 for working memory. And then you look at his vocab and he only got an 80. So he got 130 in all IQ index areas, but on the vocab, that's where the racism, the racism hides in the verbal ability. The racism hides in the verbal ability. The racism hides behind our children's inability to explain the concepts and uh, definitions and words of middle class white America. See, the racism, when they talk about the 15 point black white test gap, you always hear about the 15 point black white test gap. Well, the 15 point black white test gap is explained by the verbal ability IQ score. I would argue that this should not even be a verbal scale on the IQ score. Because when you start dealing with verbiage, you deal with culture. When you deal with culture, you deal with cultural discrimination against children who are not members of that culture. In fact, even in psychology, verbal ability is classified as crystallized intelligence. It is the result of learning and experience. Verbal ability is the result of education and experience. So if it is the result of education and experience, why is it even on the IQ test? The reason it is on the IQ test is to justify and perpetuate the belief of intellectual inferiority on the part of black kids and to perpetuate the false belief of intellectual superiority on part of white kids. In other words, the reason they will never take the verbal scale off the IQ test is it makes white kids look smarter and it makes black kids look dumber. I'm going to say it again. The reason they will never get rid of the verbal scale of the IQ test is because it makes white kids look smarter than what they are and it makes black kids look dumber than what they are. The IQ test helps to justify why black kids receive inferior education. The IQ test helps to justify why so few black kids are put in MG. The IQ test helps to justify why so many black kids are diagnosed with learning disabilities and mental retardation. They will never get rid of the IQ test because the IQ test is a weapon of psychological mass destruction. The IQ test is a weapon of psychological mass destruction. It perpetuates the intellectual inferiority stereotypes that America loves to have have about black people which is why I always tell you if black kids ever outperform white kids on an IQ test they would destroy the IQ test let me say it again if black kids ever outperform white kids on an IQ test they would destroy the IQ test it wouldn't even exist 
You will never get a test in America where the black kids consistently outperform the white kids because it would upset the apple cart. It would upset the status quo. It would throw intellectual white supremacy into a quagmire. Do you all understand? This is why you need to go to GoFundMe.com and donate to the Frederick Douglass Marcus Garvey Academy. This is why you need to go to GoFundMe.com. You understand? This is why. All right? Now, can your child have a disability and be gifted? Yes. Let me say it again. Your child can have a disability and still be gifted. I need y'all to understand because some of you got kids with learning disabilities. You say, oh, he can't qualify for gifted. He in special ed. Yes, he can. Remember, giftedness is not even in special ed no more. You can be gifted with a learning disability. You can be gifted and autistic. You can be gifted and emotionally disturbed. You can be gifted with a speech and language impairment. You can be gifted in deaf. You can be gifted and blind. Yes, you can be gifted and and have a disability. Now, of course, you can't be gifted and mentally retarded, right? That can't work. That's the only thing you can't because that's a contradiction. How are you going to be gifted and intellectually disabled? You understand? But you can be gifted with any other disability. So if your kid is in special ed and you think they're gifted, yes, you can request that they get evaluated. Yes. Is the teacher going to fight you? Yes. Is the school going to fight you? Yes. Because if your child is gifted and they can't learn how to read, then that's automatically showing us what? That the problem might not be the child. The problem might be the teacher's inability to teach. If your child is gifted with a math disability, maybe the problem is not that the kid can't learn how to count. Maybe it's the teacher who don't know how to teach. Yes, you can be gifted and have an IEP. You can have a gifted IEP and you can have a special ed IEP. Now, some parents are going to uh, ask the question, if my child gets a gifted support program, if my child qualifies for gifted, they have the gifted IEP, they receive gifted support. If I don't agree with the quality of the gifted support, can I take the school to due process? If the state still has a special ed law, yes, you can take the school district to due process with the state. But I want y'all to be clear because I don't want to mislead you. I need you to understand something. It is very difficult to get the state to force a school district to provide a gifted child with a better education, with a better gifted education, okay? Because there's no money in gifted, so it's going to be difficult for you to force the state or to get the state to force the school, school district to provide your child with a private gifted education. That's going to be very difficult. It's easy with special ed. It's going to be very difficult for gifted. So although your child has a right to a gifted eval, although your child has a right to gifted support, I want y'all to understand it's going to be very difficult if you are not satisfied with the quality of gifted support that your child receives. It's going to be very, very difficult for you to influence the, the state to force your child's school district to provide them with a, a gifted independent school to provide them with a gifted outside teacher to pay for extra gifted supports that's going to be difficult i want to be honest with you guys gifted lawsuits for gifted and uh due process complaints for gifted kids they don't go too well all the time i'm not saying don't fight i always want you to fight for your kids do not misinterpret what i'm saying i'm simply saying gifted kids do not have the same power that they used to have when giftedness was in special ed. Gifted kids don't have the same power as special ed kids. A gifted kid doesn't have the same power as an autistic kid. They don't have the same power, you understand, as a blind kid. They don't have the same power, you understand, as a truly intellectually disabled kid. Still fight, but I need you to know that the gifted fight is not going to be won as easily as a special ed fight. I just want y'all to understand that, okay? But please let me know if you ever have a school in a state that still has a gifted law refusing your special ed child or refusing your regular ed child a right to be evaluated. OK, so again, let's look at the gifted criteria. Number one, an IQ score of 130. But Dr. Umar would argue if the black kid has a 120, that should be sufficient above average test scores. Can't be qualified as gifted if you don't have the test scores. Report card grades need to be straight A's and B's. 
Report card grades need to be straight A's and B's. Nobody is putting no kid in gifted if he's barely passing his grades. So parents, I know some of y'all say, my kid is smart. Listen, he got to show it. If he does not show and prove, if your daughter does not show and prove, it does not work. Okay, how often does a gifted IEP needs to be done every year? A gifted IEP needs to be done every year because the child moves up a grade every year, just like a special ed IEP needs to be done every year because the child moves up a grade every year. So the IEPs is every year for gifted as well as for special ed, okay? They need to have evidence of gifted ability, permanent products, tests, homework assignments, reports, projects. They need to love education. They need to be above their peers. They need to be able to demonstrate their intelligence. The teacher should clearly see the intelligence. The parents should clearly see the intelligence. And let me say this. If you have a teacher hating on your gifted kid, because a lot of white folks don't want to admit black kids are gifted. A lot of white folks don't want to admit that black kids are gifted. So if you have a teacher play hating on your child's gifted ability, find another teacher who will support it. Ask another teacher in the same school or a previous school to write a letter in support of their belief that your child has gifted education. Do you understand? Okay. So I just wanted to do a quick intro to giftedness. I want to apologize to all my parents who have been on the uh, Black Parent Teleconference line these past six Tuesdays. We haven't done a Black Parent Teleconference since I was in... Uh, Johannesburg uh, first two weeks in uh, October so I apologize I just been moving around a lot but we will be back on this Tuesday so any parent who has questions about their children Dr. Umar Johnson will resume the black parent teleconference which we hold every Tuesday morning 6 a.m. until 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time 6 a.m. until 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, and we will do it live from Columbus, Georgia. My next stop is Columbus, Georgia, and we will be doing the Black Parent Teleconference the day after tomorrow, November 22nd, 6 a.m. until 8 a.m., God willing, ancestor supporting. We will do it live from Columbus, Georgia. If you need the information, scroll down my Facebook, scroll down my Twitter, scroll down my Instagram, and you can get the information there. OK, or you can text me for it. Two one five nine eight nine nine eight five eight two one five nine eight nine nine eight five eight. Or you can email me for it. Dr. Umar Johnson at Yahoo dot com. Dr. Umar Johnson at Yahoo dot com. To be honest with you guys, if you need a flyer, texting is easier for me to send you a flyer through text than through email. So if you have a message, you can email that. But if you just want a flyer, I can text you to flyer better. Add me on WhatsApp. WhatsApp works better than my regular text. Go to WhatsApp. Add me with the same phone number, 215-989-9858. The call-in number for the Tuesday morning call, you have to text me for that. I don't know it by heart. I'm sorry. I don't know it by heart. Just text me uh, for that. If you need a private consultation, a private consultation for your child, education and mental health, or if you need a private life coaching session for yourself. You're going through a relationship issue. You have personal challenges. Um, whatever your issue is, I do personal life coaching. Okay. Dr. Umar Johnson does life coaching as well. So if there's any adults going through an issue, you just need to talk to somebody in confidence and get a real opinion. You can also do uh, a life coaching session with me as well as consultations for your children. Okay. That's $50 for that $50 donation for the personal consultations, life coaching sessions for you or your child. And you can do that on PayPal, paypal.me slash Umar the psychologist, paypal.me slash U-M-A-R-T-H-E psychologist. One word, paypal.me slash Umar the psychologist. My phone number, 215-989-9858. Donations, gofundme.com forward slash Dr. Umar. GoFundMe.com slash Dr. Umar. GoFundMe.com slash D-R-U-M-A-R. Or you can mail your donation in payable to FDMG Academy, P.O. Box 6872, Philadelphia, PA 19132, FDMG Academy, P.O. Box 6872, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania 19132. 
Okay, so Columbus, Georgia, Tuesday, Washington, D.C., December the 4th, Elizabeth, New Jersey, December the 10th, Jamaica, Queens, New York, December the 11th, St. Louis, Missouri, December 26th, Jacksonville, Florida, December 28th, Detroit, Michigan, December the 30th, Atlanta, Georgia, January 1st, Los Angeles, California, January the 7th. Okay, San Diego, California for the National Independent Black Parent Association. I want to see everybody at the National Independent Black Parent Association training on Friday and Saturday, January 27th and 28th with Queen Mother Makeda and myself, World Beat Cultural Center. And I will be doing a power lecture in San Diego on Sunday, the 29th of January. Okay, Morgan State University, you will see me soon. Norfolk State University, you will see me soon. I'm getting a lot of college invitations. China, Dr. Umar will be in China in May. Okay, just got an invitation to come on back out to the United Kingdom. You guys will see me out in the UK also. Okay, so that's how we work it. Appreciate the love, appreciate the support. Again, thank you to everybody who came out to show support in Memphis. Tuesday morning, Black Parent Teleconference. Registration is coming up soon for the Black College and Consciousness Tour. Registration is coming up soon for a Team Pan-African Secret Conference for True Revolutionary Pan-African Nationalists. I will also be holding an International Pan-African Youth Leadership Conference in Africa. Updates on the Repatriation Task Force is also coming up soon. So I'm just working. Prince of Pan-Africanism, I'm just working. You understand? So we're just going to stay focused. We ain't going to worry about the dusty hoteppers. Only reason why they're making videos about me is because I'm relevant. You understand? Don't get mad at me. That my Breakfast Club interview was the most reposted, okay, one of the most reposted in Breastic Breakfast Club history. I'm not even a rapper. I'm a revolutionary taking over the hip-hop airwaves. Don't hate. Remember, you cannot hate the championship trophy away. You got to earn it. You got to earn the throne, my brothers in the conscious community. Hating on me ain't going to get you the throne. If you want the top seat, you got to come and take it, Okay. I am not interested in being a part of the Intellectual Masturbation World Wrestling Federation. I am not interested in being a part of the Intellectual Masturbation World Wrestling Federation. Okay? You got me? So, peace and love, black family. Live, Memphis, Tennessee. Thanks for everybody coming out again. Dr. Umar Johnson, peace and love.